This is question 8 from paper 3-2 from the June 2020 Cambridge International Exams. Up the top right of the screen you'll find a card that will bring you to the playlist for all my solutions for the questions in this paper. And in the description below the video you'll find a link to an image of this question so you can try it before looking at my solution. This question is split into two fully separate questions. Part A, uh, they're both about imaginary numbers. Part A wants us to solve this equation here. So let's jump right into that. W is what we're solving for. Now, one of the ways to do this, the easiest way, the way I find anyway, easiest, is to instead of W, let's write W as X plus uh, YI. And uh, they, they want it in this form anyway, so this is helpful for us. So let's write this equation again, but instead of W, let's put this in. So we get 1 plus 2i multiplied by x plus uh, yi um, plus i multiplied by... Now, W, this star here, is the conjugate. Sometimes you also see it wrote as W with a bar over it. So it's the conjugate, the complex conjugate. And all that means is we change the sign of the imaginary part. So we get x minus yi is equal 3 plus 5i. Now, uh, let, let's do this quickly, actually, um, because it's not that difficult of a question part A. What we need to do is get all the real numbers on the left and all is equal to all the real numbers on the right. And then we get all the imaginary numbers is equal to all the imaginary numbers. This uh, happens very regularly when we're doing equations with imaginary numbers. So let me write down all the real numbers. So remember, we have to multiply them out. Uh, we would get 1 times x, that would be real. We'd get a 1, this would be imaginary, this would be imaginary. Now, imaginary multiplied by imaginary will give us a real number. It'll give us 2y um, multiplied by a minus 1. So minus 2y. That'll give us imaginary. Imaginary by imaginary will give us a real, which is plus y, and is equal to, uh, sorry, these are all the reals, it's equal to 3. So if I clean this up, I get x minus y is equal to 3. Now let's do the same with the imaginary numbers. We'd get 2x over here, 2xi, I'll leave off all the i's. Everything I write here will have an i in it. Or I'm just writing the, 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 real, the, the real number that's multiplied by i in this case. So instead of 2xi, I'll write 2x. Uh, instead of yi, I'll just write y. Um, I'll just write this x here. And I'll just write the 5 here. So this is 3x plus y is equal to 5. We have a simple simultaneous equation. Let's write them uh, beside each other. Minus y is equal to 5. And uh, sorry, equal to 3. Let's add these together. We get 4x is equal to 8. Means x must equal to 2. And uh, let's use this one here. 2 minus y must equal to 3. Minus y must equal to... 1, y is equal to minus 1. So the answer, w, this w here, w is equal to 2 minus 1i, or minus i. And that's our, that's our solution for w there. That's uh, part a. I'll go ahead and rub all this out, because we don't need any of that for part b. Okay, in part 1 of part b, they ask us to solve these two inequalities here. They, they want us to actually sketch the solution on an argon diagram. So I've started to draw that over here. This is the real part and the imaginary axis. And um, these are actually quite complicated to explain. I can, I can do them very quickly, and I'm going to show you how I do them very quickly. And then after that, I'm going to explain why I was able to do it. A little explanation about it. But it's not going to be too detailed, because I think a proper class on how to do these takes 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and I don't want to do that in an exam solution. So if, if people do have more questions after this, ask them in the comments, I'll try and answer them, and I will hopefully do an entire video at some stage. Maybe it's already out there and it's already linked below. Okay, so how do I do it quickly? Let's do the first part. I, I separate this. I know when I'm dealing with um, complex uh, um, inequalities that... Certain things look the same over and over. 
So when I'm dealt with one that looks like this, I rewrite it like this. And we'll, you'll see a bit more why when I explain it in a few moments. But from this information, I'm now able to answer this, this part, this inequality. I'm able to draw it. I go to this point, 2 plus 2i. That's 2 and 2i here. And I draw a circle that um, has a radius of 1. So let's put that in here. And then um, the inequality being less than 1 tells me everything inside it. Or I sometimes just test that when I'm not sure. Like I put in the center point, which is 2 plus 2i minus 2 plus 2i is 0. So 0 is less than 1. So everything inside this is in fact right. So I just put a couple of arrows showing that everything inside that circle uh, satisfies this inequality. So let's move on to the next one. The next one, I very similarly rewrite that as z minus 4i, but I, I change the sign of 4i if you see what I mean. Um, and what's that? That is bigger than minus 1 over 4 pi. And what I know from this, uh, again, from doing these, and I'll explain in a few moments a little more about it, is when you, do, when you get the argument, we go from the center, uh, from the x, from the origin. But when I'm dealt with something, when I take away something here, I change where the origin is. Actually, that's pretty much my explanation. So I'm going to, instead of going from 0, 0, I'm going to start at 4, 1. I'm going to start up here. And then I just read this angle. This angle is minus uh, 45 degrees, or pi over 4. So I just go down 45. That goes straight through 2, 2, wouldn't it? Um, 1, 3 here, 2, 2. Yeah, it would. Uh, let's see, it goes down, and it would hit uh, 4, 0. I'd get that line. And I know bigger than or equal to simply points up this way. Now again, we can test that. Be careful though, you can't test the origin. Well, we can test this origin, I suppose. Um, I just pick some number. I pick 4 plus 4i. It'd make the i's cancel nice and easily then. And uh, that would mean a 4 plus 4i, that would be 4i four, four minus 4i is 0. And we're left with the real value of 4. The argument of a real number is just 0 because it's straight along the axis. So is 0 bigger than minus pi over 4? It is. So this point is where we want. So that's the half of the plane we want. This is going up that way as well. So uh, to answer this question, the answer to this question is there's the shaded region right there. And we're finished. That's part one finished. I'll just explain a little more how I was able to get that. Um, when we're getting the absolute value, what we're really asking is a distance. So when you think about distances, uh, for example, if I told you you were standing in the center of somewhere and I told you where is one away, you might walk one away there and say that's one away. You might walk this direction and say that's one away. You would basically walk in a circle. Everywhere in that circle is one away. And then z min a complex number minus another complex number is, is the same as saying the distance between these two. So the distance between z, or a number we don't know, and this number we do know is 1. So there's, if this was equal, for example, if this was equal, z would be somewhere on this circle. Because what this tells me is z is 1 away from this point. So that's how I was quickly able to get that. For the argument then, uh, the arg I'll draw another one of these rough pictures. The argument is asking me a question um, about what angle is the point away. So any, any number I put into an argument, it's just asking me to go to that point and tell, let's say the point's here, and tell me this angle here. So if we look at this one more specifically, I'll keep the minus 4i here. So if I were to ask myself what is z, because z could be any number, let's say z is 2, 2 plus 2i. What the argument of z minus 4i is asking me, it's not asking me this angle, it's asking me 2 plus 2i minus 4, which is down here, it's, it's asking me to give this answer here. And another point, let's pick a point wilder here, 2 plus, it's like 8 plus 2i, all the way down here. So it's not asking me uh, this angle, this really narrow angle. It's asking me this point minus 4i. This really narrow angle. 
that's fine there's nothing wrong this is easy to we could do it this way if you were mapping it out but in, instead of moving every time every, every time i had to move down four every time i had to move down four you know it would be easier if i moved the entire world up four instead of every time going down four if, if i just moved the entire world up to here and that's a new origin I'm not going to measure the angle from zero, zero. I'm going to measure from this new star of the world. So now, if I want to, if this is Z, this Z here, the angle is this, which is the same as the angle we would have got there. The, this one is the angle is here, which is this, well, not my drawings, not, but it, it would work out the same. So that's really what we're doing there. We're moving the entire world this number. We're moving the entire world up this number. So then if I want to know what Z angle Z makes, and I don't want to know because they tell me. They tell me what angle this Z makes. That's how I draw it. Okay, I hope that gives you an inclination of how I got these. In reality, in, in an exam, most students just remember how to do this type, this type, and uh, one other type. Uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head at the moment. Maybe there's one more as well. But hopefully that answers. Again, put your questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer more or I might do an entire video. Okay, we have one last part, uh, B part two. Find the least value of the imaginary part of Z. They write it like this, M of Z. Maybe they should put a bracket around it like this. The imaginary part of Z. And here's Z. Z is anywhere or everywhere inside this shaded region. That's all the possible places Z could be. So they want the minimum number. I could probably write like this, min number of the imaginary part of Z. Well, that's here's the imaginary part. The imaginary part of here is three. The imaginary value of here is two. We can get all the way down to here. I don't know what number it is yet, but that's the lowest point. It's basically, they want to know what that point is. That's it, there's a few ways to do it. Um, we could do coordinate geometry. I think a triangle could be found though. If I find this triangle, let's zoom into this. This is the center of the circle at 2, 2. If I coordinate geometry, you could have found uh, the point 2, 2. You also understand the equation of the circle. Oh, not the way I did it, I guess. Uh, but you can get the equation of a circle when you have the center and the radius. And uh, you can find the equation of this line. That's a complicated way to do it. This is much easier. So, okay, we have a triangle. Let's see. We know what this length is here. It's one. It's the length of the circle. The length of the circle is one. We also actually know what this angle is here. This angle is pi over four. Um, pi over, it's minus pi over four, but can't have a minus angle. This is <laughs> where we know this is pi over four. This angle here might be minus pi over four, measured down this way. Either way, this is pi over four. Or let me just write 45 degrees, same thing. My calculator is in degrees at the moment, so <laughs> I'll leave it like that. And really all we're looking for is this height. If I knew this height, I'd find this point. Because this point is just this height take away two. So that's, uh, that's easy enough, that's just cosine, isn't it? Cosine of 45 degrees is equal, let's put an x in, is equal to x over 1. Uh, put that into a calculator and we get uh, 1 over, x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. And that's it, the, the lowest imaginary value of z is equal to 2 minus 1 over square root of 2. Because I'm here and I'm going down that much more. So this number is about one point something. And that's it, that's your full answer. Very quick to do at the end, just draw one simple triangle. Uh, oh, I'll point out the answer in the, um, the, the answer scheme. Gives an answer of two minus square root of two over two. It's the same answer, it's identical. The, they just don't like using square roots in the bottom row. So if you multiply top and bottom by the square root of two, we get square root of 2, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. All right, that's, um, I hate saying square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. Sounds like I've lost an entire classroom whenever I say that. All right, okay, I hope uh, that answers this question, or at least it gives you 
an idea where to look for more answers at least. Um, the comment section below would be a good place to ask and I will try my best to answer. Thanks for watching and have a great day.